Hey guys, welcome back. It is episode 23 of the 5050 Showcase. This is my attempt to show as many different level 50 City of Heroes, Heroes, Villain, Vigilante, Rogue builds as I can that I have in my collection of incarnated tier 3 characters to kind of show you all the different play styles, uh, options, that sort of thing. Not all of them, of course, but a whole bunch of them, just so you have an idea if you've never played before, or if you have played for a while and you're looking for something different, something weird, something unique, something whatever, because most of my builds have a point, have a purpose, have a have a theme to them. Uh, most of them are fairly inexpensive. They're not all purpled out, etc. Uh, so kind of the, the every man's or every woman's build, I guess you want to think about it that way. This is Sycorax. He is a defender. He's number three of my defenders. He's got Storm Summon, which is a pretty powerful debuff set, also damaging. Uh, he's got Beam Rifle, which is a debuffy, shoot him from range, blasty set. Uh, which can do some decent damage. And then you've got Mace Mastery, which is one of the patron pools of Red Side. That's Black Scorpion's power set. Uh, and that has some debuff and some control uh, as well. So let's take a look at the build so you can see what the concept was for this guy. All right, let me move over to mids. Here we go. So if you take a quick look, I've got every blast in beam rifle i've got almost every power in storm summoning so i'm really going for blaster light uh with this character i'm going to be sitting back uh hovering so i've got hover uh and blasting from range with all these different uh beam rifle attacks i'll usually try to lead with disintegrate i've talked about beam rifle before with my corruptor alara uh, and the idea here is that you are shooting with Disintegrate first, which sets them up for the Disintegration effect, uh, which just causes this damage over time to spread through the group. So you usually try to target the, the big boy in the middle of the pack, and then you start unloading with the rest of your attacks. Uh, this set is going to work a little bit different than the Corruptor combo, because I had Beam and Poison, so that was more of just a single target pure pew pew down range and i would swoop in uh with with the lara there to drop the poison um trap to you know start getting everybody to choke out with this guy he's going to be just much more standoffish much more just hanging back he's relying upon uh some decent defense and other um resistances where lara was more just debuff the bejesus out of people and hope you know, that that's enough to protect her this guy's got a lot more you know native defenses uh, he's going to have things like Steaming Mist giving him some resistance and some defense. He's got Scorpion Shield, which gives some defense. He's got Maneuvers, which gives some defense. And then some of my various slotting gives me some uh, set bonuses that have defenses and such as well. So overall, when you look at his numbers, he's going to be fairly safe. Uh, he's much more than that Corruptor build was. If you take a look at the totals, you see what I'm talking about. So defensively, he's got, you know, smash lethal energy is his top threes. We're talking 30, 40%. And he's got some, you know, teens and 20s for most of his other defenses. Uh, resistance, he's pretty, you know, resistant to energy damage, which is a common damage type. Fire and cold are pretty high as well, 37%. Uh, and all that is without my incarnates activated. Once I activate at least uh, the cardiac, that's going to give me some more damage resistance and some more uh, endurance recovery, that sort of thing. And that is probably the biggest weakness for this combo is the endurance issue. You're going to see that in play, but I'll bring it up now. Uh, you can see that the recovery for this character is sitting at 3.3 uh, per second, whereas the drain is 1.8. And I've talked about that before where I always try to shoot for that sweet spot of at least, I mean, bare minimum two to one. Uh, three to one is much, much better. And you can see already, I am not at two to one. I'm below two to one. So this character is going to bleed endurance. Uh, and that's because I got all these different toggles, right? I'm running hover, steamy mist, leadership pool with maneuvers, tactics, assault, 
I've got the Scorpion Shield running. I've got focused accuracy. So lots of toggles is going to make this guy just, you know, sucking endurance the whole time. That's why I went with the Cardiac, because when I activate that, that is going to lower my endurance strength down to 1.4, which is below that 2 to 1 ratio. So um, um, or above the 2 to 1 ratio, I guess, put it that way. So it's, it's much better. Uh, but that means really this guy is going to need to be playing at higher levels to you know, be able to just unload because as I'm playing, my toggles are draining so much energy and then start throwing out these blasts, you know, you're going to be out of juice really fast. This is not a healer. You're not going to be saving the team with your buffs and such because all you've got is O2 boost really. Uh, and I don't really have it, you know, super well slotted. I've got it three slotted with Dr. Wounds and that's uh, really mainly to get, let me turn on my pop-ups here. You can see so it's to get some of that damage resistance that's really the only reason i even slotted o2 boost at all it's it's a single target you know low you know low amount of healing type of buff it does give some resistance to i think endurance strain and can uh, give some meds protection a little bit but it's nothing that's going to you know game change and save the team so if you're taking storm because you want to be a healer no big mistake uh, you're taking storm for the other stuff. Uh, you kind of want to use chaos uh, to defend your team. So you got freezing rain, which is a nice patch uh, debuff damage power. So I've got this thing slotted up with some shield breakers to uh, rip up defenses. If you look at the numbers on it, uh, let me shut off my current skins. I don't want to muddy this. Let me turn off pop ups again. So they get annoying. Uh, so you take a look at the numbers over here. You're gonna be Lowering defense, debuffing at 36, debuffing damage resistance 35. So that's that's huge. You're shredding your whole bunch of enemies by a third of their defense and their damage resistance. So that's going to make it easier for you to hit and to hit harder, not just you, but your entire um, team. And so that power, that's, that's going to be your bread and butter with this build. I think you're going to drop this thing. Uh, the recharge, it's my recharge. Every 31 seconds this thing is up. The duration is 15, so... You drop it, it's going to start raining there for 15 seconds, and then 15, 16 seconds later it's recharged, and you can drop another one. So it's, it's going to be a an every every mob uh, type of power. You're going, to, you're going to want to drop this pretty early in a fight to start debuffing. I don't know if it's your leadoff. Uh, you'll see it in practice. It could be a leadoff with around the corner drops, but probably not your opening move. My opening move, most likely with this character, I don't have Mass Hypnosis like you've seen me use on my Corruptors and Defenders before as a good opener. I actually might use Gale a bunch. Uh, it's, you know, your Tier 1 Storm attack, and I do have it slotted with the Sudden Acceleration knockback to knock down. So that I'll just, instead of just blowing the guys across the uh, field there, you'll just blow them down and they just fall right in place. It's pretty, pretty effective as a deep, not a debuff, but it's just an opening salvo. You can knock down almost the entire group of foes as long as you hit them, of course, which is why I have the accuracy slotted. And also why you see I'm running tactics, I'm running focused accuracy. I've got a bunch of thunder strikes uh, slotted with accuracy boosting. I've got tons of to hit and accuracy boosting on this build because I've said this one before too, I hate missing. So I've got uh, it's hit bonuses of 73.5%. My accuracy bonuses are 82%. So I pretty much am not going to miss. And I've got aim on top of all that. So when I want to hit something, I'm going to hit it. Uh, the other power that you'll see is going to be very important is going to be Snowstorm. Uh, so once I've got uh, a group being rained on, I'm maybe shooting some beams in there, I'll drop snowstorms to slow them down, they can't get away from the patch, they can't get away from the disintegration that's spreading. I've got web envelope, which is going to shoot a big old blob of web for immobilize, keep them all, you know, confined. So really between freezing rain, which has a slow, snowstorm, which is slow, web envelope, which is immobilized, I think it also might have a minus, yeah, minus fly. Those three powers combined will keep most things in place once I gale and knock them down. And then I can just start beam rifling everything to death. Uh, I do have Hurricane as a you know protective measure, but I don't run it all the time because if you take a look at my totals, if I turn that on, uh, right now my recovery is 3-3, the end drain is 1-8. This is without incarnate, so if I run Hurricane on top of all that, 
I'm at 2.1 end drain versus 3.3. That is a total endurance hog. If I have all those toggles running, I really can't do much of the way of blasting. I'm just got the stand back. So I really only use Hurricane uh, in, you know, oh no situations. Uh, maybe one of my allies is getting wrecked. I'll swoop in the main lane. Just, it's going to scatter. It's going to push things around. So that's why, you know, one of the reasons you don't want to use it. But, you know, if somebody's getting murdered, I'll swoop in there and start pushing things around, cause some chaos, bring uh, aggro onto me. And then once you know, the team kind of starts to recover from that, I can shut it off, back off again, uh, and let the team, you know, reorganize and get the, the enemies down. Uh, or if I'm playing backline and stuff is coming after me, coming after the blasters, or whatever, that are next to me, Hurricane, I'll fire that up so nothing can get to us, especially in narrow corridors like caves or, you know, the uh, Circle of Thorns, Temple maps, those types of places. This is a great, you know, uh, cork that you can just stop or up the corridors with it. So anyway, that is the main kind of idea. Stand back, blast, drop debuffs from range, swoop in if necessary but usually it's not as far as incarnates go what do i have to kind of team up with everything well you've seen me have clarion before because hey if you're playing defender corruptor that's sort of thing you don't have any meds protection you know there's a couple builds yeah you do but most don't so this is going to give me that that meds protection is the main reason i'm taking it but i like to go radial because i like the range boost on attack you know range characters like defenders and corruptors is nice or well you know, anybody with range attacks and then the special is probably the big thing because special is going to boost your heals your debuffs that sort of stuff your defenses so if you take a look at my defense when i click clarion those numbers jump up about what 20 percent from where they're at so i go from 36 to 56 smash lethal so that's a pretty good you know uh, jump right there when i fire that guy up i've got uh the support uh, radio, which is going to boost damage, accuracy, defense, and special some more. So I click that. You can see now my defense numbers are 70%, 40%, 30%, all over the place. My accuracy is even higher now. My damage is being boosted. My specials are being boosted. Uh, lots of goodness there. For the interface, I've got the debuffing one here, minus to hit. Uh, that'll help stack with some of my defenses that I have. It'll also stack with hurricanes, minus defense. I got the minus regen, which helps stack with some of the minus regen I'm getting out of beam rifle. And then I've got cardiac, which I already mentioned why, because of the endurance cost reductions, the range boosting, damage resistance. So you start clicking all these powers, you can see overall got really good defenses going. I've got solid resistance in some categories. My recovery is still going to be around 3-3, three, three, so that's not going to, um, you know, change. But Endurance Drain is now a manageable 1.4. It's still not optimal. It's barely 2-1, to one, so I don't like that. Uh, so I am going to be eating a lot of blue Skittles during combat. But it's at least manageable, and I just have to be toggle aware. So if I start, you know, getting... Uh, a lot of endurance starts to drain that I can shut off something like assault. I can shut off something like focus accuracy. So it just depends on the situation. You know, if we're steamrolling stuff and I don't need to run maneuvers, I don't need to run, you know, a hurricane, I can shut all these things off. But just be aware that if you are going to go with this build, even with all that endurance reduction, and if you have hurricane running, you're 1.6 versus 3.3. So you are right at that 2 to 1 very minimum sweet spot in my opinion so you'll be able to blast some but you're not gonna be able to just unleash uh going crazy with this oh by the way if you throw on snowstorm on top of that it's another toggle now you're at 1.9 so really snowstorm and hurricane are your big optionals if you have any endurance issues you're not going to run those probably much at all during a fight or during a mission but if maybe you got somebody else on your team that's kinetics or uh, electric affinity that's thrown out some plus endurance or recovery powers, well, then that'll solve that problem for you. But anyway, that is the, the build, right? That's the idea. That's what we are trying to accomplish here. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead, stop this vid and fire up some solo missions and then fire up some team missions after that to show you in practice, in game, what all this character can do. All right, be right back.